guys and welcome to this third episode of my Computecraft tutorial series. Uh, in this episode we'll be going through RedNet and uh, how that works. So uh, in today's uh, contraption I've done a simple chat software which uh, connects multiple computers and makes them able to chat with each other. So now obviously I have this in really close range so it's not that special and yeah but you could, of course, uh, create these pro uh, computers uh, more far away from each other, and yeah. So let's show that real fast. So first, you enter the nickname. So I'll just enter my name, and now we're ready to chat. So hello, and on the other computers, it says what I said, and I can also say hello and. Hello. <laughs> so that's basically it. Nothing special, but it's and it's really easy to create. So uh, let's get into more of how the API works. Okay. So uh, as you may see here, there's two different APIs here. And basically, this is the old one which we had before 1.5. So Computercraft 1.5. And this is the new one. Uh, so let's just first go into the RedNet API and how that works. Uh, actually first, uh, the main difference between the two is RedNet API sends an ID and the modem API sends on channel. So uh, you can have multiple computers connected to a channel and send on that channel and everyone can listen to it. Kind of. I'll show more of this later first let's go through the rednet so first here rednet open basically opens the modem and makes it able to receive messages open right like so and now you will see it's red instead of gray like this is and that means it's active and can receive messages and the next one here rednet close basically the opposite right and now it's great again. And rednet send is how we will send messages and you have to supply the ID and the message. So uh, let's launch this program. It's basically a quick program I made to receive messages. So computer ID is 17 and then I need to open the modem again and then I do rednet.send and 17 because I want to send to 17 so hello and that's how you send a message and this one should have received it so yeah got from 18 message low and the distance to that computer this is all the information you'll get from that uh, receive uh, uh, command sorry okay rednet broadcast is basically the same as the rednet send although you don't need an ID here this will just send to all open uh, and active uh, computers which is within range uh, probably I should tell you this as well that the modem d doesn't have an internal uh, range this is also a config option so we could like set it to a thousand in range if you want that but uh, that's no fun <laughs> and basically I think it's 64 blocks when you're on uh, the normal level and if you go higher up in the world it it increases and if you go lower it decreases also in thunderstorms it's also really really short so that's pretty cool and ID message distance this is just some random variables which can be anything but if you do it like this then you will get the ID message and distance in these variables when you do the rednet receive so this could also be like just A, B and C but of course it's better to use variable names that you'll understand better so ID and message and distance is what you get in that order and rednet receive receives the message with a specific timeout if you write 
no time out there, it's eternal and it will wait forever until it gets a message. And if you write a timeout, it will wait that many seconds before it timeouts. Uh, and Reddit open, no, Reddit is open. It basically gives true or false if the uh, Reddit or the modem is open or not. So uh, let's look at this program so we'll see how I received the message. Okay, so first I basically just clear the screen to make it neat. And then I'll go into while true loop, so loop eternally. And then I'll write the computer ID to the screen. And to get the computer ID, you write os.getComputerID. When you do this, you'll get ID within the program, so that's a handy thing. And then I open and uh, modem on the right side and here id message distance equals rednet receive so it will wait for that and this part is commented out so I'll tell you about that later uh, so when when it have received uh, redstone uh, no not redstone but rednet message it will continue obviously here it will wait until it gets a message because it's no timeout and when it get, gets the message, it will clear the screen again and then print the ID, the message, and the distance in a neat format. So it's not really that hard at all. Also, this one is uh, another function which you can also use instead of Redness Receive. Uh, this gives all the same values except it will also give an event. So always pull event and rednet message. Uh, what always pull event does is it just registers different events and when you write the event here it will check for only that event. There's loads of events you can wait for on like mouse clicks and writing something or redstone signal or yeah there's loads. But you can, of course, just use rednet receive if you want that. Okay, so that's basically the rednet API. Uh, so it's not really that hard. So let's move on to the modem API. And to use the modem API, you have to wrap your peripheral because this will, you have to wrap your modem to be able to use these commands, just like wrapping a monitor or something. So to wrap a um, uh, peripheral, you have to do a variable name. So I'll just do modem equals peripheral dot wrap and the side. So now I've wrapped the peripheral and can use these commands. And again, to use these commands, you have to write whatever you wrapped the peripheral to. So in this case, I use modem. So modem dot open. If I written like m or something. I can't use modem.open but then m.open like so. So this can again be anything. So uh, first one modem.open uh, this will open a channel so let's test that out. So first let's wrap it. Right and then I do end up open one. That's basically it. Now I opened channel one. So uh, then again, modem is open, and then all the channel. This will check if it's open. So let's just check this. And true. So it will return false if not, just as this one. And then we have transmit, and this is the send command. So uh, in this case you have to supply which channel to send to, which channel you want the reply on, and the message. So uh, let's launch another program here which I wrote, modem. Then I can do just transmit now since I've already opened one. So transmit, and on channel 1 let's make channel 2, the reply, and Hello. 
and now you see I got the message from the modem on the right and message on channel 1 and reply channel is 2 and message is low and distance so you get exactly the same amount of uh, information from this except you have the channel and reply and the channel and you also have the side and event so yeah you get the same but more and then modem close channel will just close it and not listen to it anymore and modem close all will close all open channels so uh, that's basically how this works now you probably don't see how can I receive a message here but that's why I used uh, OS or showed you that you can use OS pull event on this as well because on the modem API you have to use os.pull event so let's look at this uh, program so first I wrap the peripheral then I make the clear function and then I clear the screen just to make it look neat again I open channel 1 so I'll be able to listen to it and then again I'll do a while loop and here you see first you'll get the event and that's not really needed because that will be whatever event and since I specified the event I wanted to wait for so always pull event and modem message this is how the event which will happen when you receive the modem message this is the only event that's gonna be registered in this variable so you don't really need to care about that and you will get the side of the modem in the next variable so the cool thing about that is that you can have multiple modems on one computer and all, like make all of them have different tasks and easier to control which messages goes where and stuff and the channel uh, just where you uh, which channel you received it on so if you have multiple channels open you know okay it was from channel 1 reply channel so you know where to reply to a uh, message and the distance and then again the pull event uh, you don't need to use the reply channel so uh, you could just use one channel all the time uh, and then again when I receive the message I clear the screen and then I print out all the information again in a neat format so that's basically all there is so let's look at the uh, chat program okay first I wrap the peripheral to the M variable then I open channel 1 and 2 in this case I don't need uh, to open channel 2 just did it and then I'll make Nick a global value and make it default to guest and uh, computer ID then I made a function startup which will I want to run and startup so I'll get the nickname which the user wants so first clear the screen and then print enter nickname and then Nick equals the string and read command which you've seen before so uh, it will convert whatever it, the user writes into a string and make this uh, whatever it wrote to Nick and then I clear the screen when that's done and then I made the function send which is again message equals to string read so it will read in your message and put it in message and then I'll send that message to channel 1 with reply as channel 2 and then the, this is the message that I'll send. So first I'll send the, uh, the nick which you have used, and then just uh, adding this. So what this does is, as you've seen, just like chunky is the nick, and then it will write a space and then the message, like so. so I don't need to do any formatting or anything on the receiving computers <laughs> and then receive event side channel reply channel and so on you'll already seen this and then I'll just print whatever 
it receives. And then the actual program. First I'll run startup and get the nickname. And then I'll do a loop eternally while true loop. And then a function you probably haven't seen, but parallel. Uh, this function makes you able to do multiple functions at the same time. So in this case I want to send messages or I want to be able to send messages and receive messages at the same time. So parallel and then wait for any. Basically it will wait for any of these to return and then run again uh, since it's in a while loop. Uh, you can also do wait for all and then it will wait for both of them to be finished. If I would have done wait for all in this case then I've had to or then it will receive a message once and then I have to send a message to be able to receive a message again. So I don't want that, I want to be able to receive all the time or send all the time. So yeah, that's basically it. So that really shows how easy it is to use RedNet and how powerful it can be. Uh, with the modem API you can have 128 channels I believe open at the same time and listen to them so uh, yeah it could make really advanced communication systems with this like email or yeah you could also of course make an in-game internet if you want <laughs> so that's a pretty neat idea just make routers and be able to send uh, messages a far or a really long distance uh, and you can have a lot of channels open or there's multiple channels available like one is of course the lowest and the highest I believe is 65,535 so 65,535 I believe it's that's the biggest uh, so there's loads of channels to take from so <laughs> that shouldn't be a problem uh, also with the new uh, modem API there's of course some security things involved uh, like with the rednet API then you would send it to the ID so if you send to an ID only that computer will receive that message and nobody else but with a channel system everyone can connect to your channel so they can basically listen to all your messaging uh, traffic and maybe try to find out what you're doing and then sending another message on your channel and possibly hacking your system so be careful <laughs> and a uh, good thing to make some encryption or some security on your programs obviously if you play single player or on a server where there's no people using computercraft it shouldn't be a problem but if you're playing on a server with people using computercraft you should be a bit careful with what kind of programs you make. So if you like this episode and uh, want to see uh, more things on Computercraft, please subscribe and uh, like or comment and see you later.